2,500 degrees C. Toxic fumes. A small drop of water is enough and everything is blown sky high. Such explosive chemicals are very close to us. In fact, they're in our bodies. Our reporter, Klaus Bermecker, wonders why we don't explode. My body, like every human body, is full of weird, explosive, flammable elements. So basically, I'm a ticking time bomb, right? Chemist Dr. Jens Walter knows all about the elements in humans. Our bodies are made up of over 50 different basic building blocks. And at least outside our bodies, they can explode, especially in combination with other substances. Has nature made us a deadly threat? Yes, in that sense, our body contains a number of explosive chemicals, but how dangerous the whole thing really is, I'll show you in a moment. A former military site. Only an expert like Dr. Jens Walter is allowed to handle the dangerous substances, because things are about to hot up. For example, you have 30 grams of magnesium in your body. Yeah, it's important for bones, muscles and for transmitting impulses from the nerves. Our organism can't function without magnesium. But it can also be a dangerous substance. Magnesium burns at a temperature of up to 3,000 degrees. The chips are highly inflammable. There is even the risk of spontaneous combustion. We want to put magnesium to the test. To speed things up, our expert puts a few detonators in the little mountain of magnesium. Fire Brigade supervises the test, because this is about to generate incredible heat, a fire almost impossible to contain. And especially when trying to extinguish it, there can be an extreme reaction. As soon as water hits the flames, the danger greatly increases, as this really fuels the fire, causing it literally to explode. And magnesium and water are present in our bodies. So, is it a dangerous mixture? Oh, yes. I can't see anymore. I think I've gone blind. Oh, this is madness. That wasn't extinguishing, it just made it worse. It's typical for metal fires. Never put out a metal fire with water, because metals burn so hot they decompose the water and don't take oxygen out of the air anymore, but out of the water. They break down the water into oxygen and hydrogen, and they both burn very well. The metal takes the oxygen out of the water, leaving the hydrogen. That reacts again with the air and really fuels the fire. Sounds dangerous. Could that happen to us? We have 43 kilograms of oxygen in our bodies and are made up of more than 70% water. If you break down the human body into its basic chemical components, you'll find more than 50 elements. Some are essential to life, others highly toxic. A 70 kilogram man like Klaas consists mainly of the following substances. Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, these are the basic elements in the body. Then, there are the so-called bulk elements. They are called that because they are found in the body in large quantities. They are phosphorus, potassium, sulphur, sodium, chlorine and magnesium. The rest are trace elements. So our body is a collection of chemicals, our own chemistry lab, so to speak. But can we explode? Or is our body so clever that it can protect itself? Klaas and Jens continue their research in the lab. What happens when these substances come together? Next experiment, iodine and aluminium. Iodine in the thyroid gland, aluminium in the bones. The two coming together would be impossible. The result, explosive. Aluminium. Everyone knows it as foil and we also have it in our bodies, but not as foil, of course. We know iodine from bird food or salt. It's also in our body and the two together are not good at all. No, quite a violent reaction. Instead of foil, Jens takes fine powder, 50 milligrams, just like in the body, plus 20 milligrams of iodine. This is corrosive to the eyes and skin. In high doses, it's even poisonous. Nevertheless, most people have it at home, diluted. Right, what irritates me a bit is that I only know iodine as a brownish tincture. That's the iodine disinfectant. That's when you dissolve iodine in alcohol and then it turns brownish. And normally it's grey. Actually, it's purple. You can't see that now, but we'll soon see that iodine vapours are purple. 
both powders together don't react. Only when the important third ingredient is added do things get serious. Water. And as I said, we have plenty of that in our bodies. And that makes it really dangerous, doesn't it? Only when these three elements come together does the chemical reaction begin. The mixture burns purple and generates brown smoke. When Jens brings the chemical elements together outside our bodies, it really does get dangerous. Why don't we turn into purple smoking volcanoes? Or are we perhaps bubbling and fizzling inside? Because that's what happens when these two substances meet. Lithium and water. Lithium is an alkali metal and trace element, present mainly in the lungs and brain. And that's where there's a lot of water. Dangerous? Doesn't look like it at first. Anyone who's ever been to the North Sea will recognize this. It looks like a lugworm, but it's lithium, the lightest metal in the world. We also have it in our bodies. And why do they store it in oil? Yeah, it's incredibly reactive, reacts immediately with humidity, and that's why you have to protect it from humidity and store it in oil. But we're taking it out. Yep, yeah, I'll get a little piece out. In our body, lithium is not surrounded by oil. Are we constantly running the risk of the metal reacting with the water in our bodies? And if so, what would happen? Outside the body, it bubbles and fizzes and becomes explosive. These bubbles are hydrogen. That means the lithium decomposes the water. I can try to ignite the hydrogen. You see this typical red color. That's quite typical for lithium. The flames are colored red. The lithium decomposes the water and burns. Are we in danger of exploding all the time? Or would little sparks burn in our bodies, like they do in this experiment? Now things are hotting up even more. Aluminium and bromine. If the aluminium in our bodies were to meet up with bromine, that would really turn the heat up. Jens, that's really awful stuff. We have it in our bodies, but as I read on the bottle here, it's toxic, corrosive and pollutes the environment. Nevertheless, we carry it around with us. Yeah, not that much really, but still 200 milligrams or so. What would happen if I inhale 200 milligrams? As a gas, serious lung damage. You wouldn't survive that. Again, Jens takes 50 milligrams of aluminium powder. And the dangerous bromine. It can burn the skin, but why doesn't it happen inside the body? Only experts are allowed to do these experiments, and Jens is also being extremely careful. With the pipette, the chemist takes up the exact amount of bromine, 260 milligrams, the same as in the body. Larger amounts would be a danger to the chemist and the reporter. As soon as the two substances meet, they react with each other in a fraction of a second. Inside, small sparks fly. It's on fire. And the bromine we carry around inside us is where? And why is it not dangerous? It's not dangerous because it's already reacted, just like iodine. Because nature was thankfully clever enough to make sure our body doesn't have to work with the pure elements. That means, in the body, the substances only occur as compounds. And by the time they form the compounds, they've already reacted with each other and already shot their boats, so to speak. Like carbon, for example, highly explosive in its pure form. That's why Klaas and Jens now need the support of a demolition expert, Wolfgang Stabe, because the carbon is about to produce a big bang. Did you know that there are 15 kilograms of it in the human body? Well done, that's a lot. And you can do a lot with it. Grind it up really fine and then add an explosive charge, you wouldn't believe the bang it makes. Let's see then, shall we? Many organic materials, for example fats and carbohydrates, consist of carbon, but just as a compound. What could happen with pure carbon? Carbon is flammable and explosive, especially in dust form. Wolfgang wants to blow a dust cloud of 30 kilograms into the air. That is twice the amount contained in the body, enough force to destroy a house. So, can I take advantage of someone? Jens, stand on this, and Klaas, come with me. 
You just stand there when it bangs. Nothing to worry about. Nothing can happen. We're all safe. Not yet, but soon. The carbon is laced with explosives. This explosion is supposed to blow the carbon up into the air and disperse it. Then, all we need is a tiny spark to make the dust explode. I'm charging the machine. Attention. The explosion disperses the fine carbon dust and provides the igniting spark. The small particles ignite each other, creating a huge ball of flames. Why does it turn into such a ball of fire? Yes, the air, very fine particles, the surface of the carbon is very large, and then it ignites through an explosive device, and that's why we get this huge fireball. Gosh. Wow, great effect. But tell me, if we have 15 kilograms of carbon in our body that's so highly flammable, why can we burn our hand on a candle without bursting into flames? Because there is no pure carbon in the body, only compounds like CO2 or glucose. And our body is even more intelligent. First of all, the carbon is distributed everywhere in your tissue and not in a purely elementary state. And secondly, your body consists mostly of water, so it'll take a while before you burn. So I'm my own fire extinguisher. The human body, an explosive mixture, but designed so that we can't explode at all, fortunately. Because in pure form, its elements would be highly dangerous. Like sodium, for example. For the quantities Jens needs for the next experiment, he needs a license. In its pure form, as it is here, sodium is very dangerous, isn't it? Yes, that's right. You can see that from the fact that it's stored in this protective liquid, paraffin oil. That's because sodium reacts very strongly with water. That means you don't have to light it, you just have to pour water on it to make it go off. Exactly. Or you could throw it into the water. And that's exactly what they're going to do. But not with the 12 grams we have in our body. Jens takes 100 times that amount. 1.2 kilograms of pure sodium. If it were like that in our bodies, the slightest drop of water would make us explode. The chemist has to be extremely careful. One wrong move and the harmless looking but explosive charge will go off. Wolfgang, what have you made there? Our pyrotechnical release. We'll hang the bag that Jens made on this, and the red thing flies up into the air. Exactly, it just explodes and then should fall into the water. The construction is necessary. If Jens just threw the sodium in, he wouldn't be able to get to safety in time. He can never estimate the force of the explosion 100% accurately. The idea is a remote controlled explosion. The bag with the sodium falls into the water and reacts. Sodium reacts immediately with water, which generates intense heat and causes an explosion. Which luckily can't happen to us because sodium occurs in the body as a harmless compound, mainly as salt, something Klaas is also relieved about. So all in all, we can be really happy that we don't have the elements in pure form in our body, but in compounds, and that's why we can't explode, which I think is quite good.